I'm Tuner Volete, and today we are making mustard chicken volute, which is French for velvet. So we're going to take a little trip to France, then right back to New Jersey. Yay, Paris! But I will say that any French philosophy past Rousseau is basically a magazine. But other than that, big fan. Big, big fan. Get the fuck out of here, Rousseau. <laughs> so step one, we've got some water and some beef stock boiling. We're going to make our mashed potatoes. I put some beef stock in here because I want to add some flavor into our potatoes. And you want them nice and peeled. Rinse them first because God knows what kind of pesticides and weird shit they put in it and spray on it. But we want to save these skins. So I have a little bit of a, some nice cold water here for all of our potato skins. We're going to make something delicious out of them later. Just peel them nice and easy. You don't have to go too crazy. Make a big mess if you like. This recipe calls for like two pounds of potatoes, but that's more of a suggestion. So you want to make sure we got all these skins in here. Really nice and beautiful. In some cold water, we want to throw a lot of salt in here. Give it a little, a little mix. We want to get all that starch out of here so we can make them nice and crispy. And then we also want to throw some salt into here. A nice, generous amount, like you're salting a sidewalk. Go right in here with our potatoes. Taters. Want this to be a nice rolling boil. This is the only way you should be preparing your chicken and that's with a salt brine. You just fill your chicken up with some tepid water in a bowl, throw some salt in it, get it in the fridge for 30 minutes. You can leave it in there overnight. It's better than any marinade. This is gonna open up all the flavors, leave you nice, juicy, and moist chicken. Moist. Now we're gonna add a little protein, a little piggy to our mashed potatoes. You always wanna put it in in a cold pan. Same with bacon. You wanna make sure the pan is cold when you're putting it in. When you make bacon and put it in a hot pan, that's why it gets all squiggly and wavy. Stole my spatula again. You don't have to scream. As always, we don't get rid of the rendered fat. We save that, that's beautiful flavor. Animal fat is really healthy for you. Anyone that tells you otherwise is full of shit. Trust me, I am, but full of fat. So we just wanna cook this nice. You'll see it sizzle on all the sides. The pieces are very small. And then we're gonna keep this and the rendered fat and just put it aside. And then we're gonna work on our chicken. Our potatoes are ready, okay? Almost. They're almost done boiling. They've been in there for about 18 minutes. Stick a fork in it. You don't want it to go all the way through and break, but it want, you want it to be nice and soft. In the meantime, we're gonna take these beautiful potato skins that we had soaking in water. We rinse them, we drain them, and then we pat them down with all of your might. You wanna get as much moisture out as we can. We're gonna season a little bit before with some salt, and we're gonna season after as well. We got a little, a little red pep here, just for a little bit of heat. Oh yeah, want these nice and crispy. Want to be frying in olive oil. When you go buy your olive oil, you want to make sure that it's authentic and it comes from a place like Italy or in the Mediterranean. Oh, look how good these are gonna go. These are gonna provide like a nice crunchy texture on top. It's gonna have a little heat. These are done. We're gonna shut the heat off here. We're gonna let this boil kind of come down and then we're gonna drain them and mash them kind of like john d rockefeller did to our economy Son of a bitch. speaking of george hw bush he's the reason why the fda is funded over 80 percent by big corporations a little potato masher to make things that you could use you'll know if they're cooked right this should not be that difficult do we make another joke about my forearm strength no you've made that joke a couple dozen times already so you don't want to season these yet that's it nice and easy mash them up Put this aside. Now we're gonna get our pan that we cooked our pancetta in. We still got that rendered fat. We want this at a nice low heat. We don't wanna overheat this. Down here we have four tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of our wheat butter, and two tablespoons of a nice European butter. European butter is great for cooking and baking because at room temp it's a lot more malleable than regular butter. And that serves our purposes really nicely. So we want this to melt nice and slow. We have 160 milligrams in this pan. It's all gonna go into our mashed potatoes. We just wanna warm this up. We don't want it to be bubbling or sizzling, spitting at us. And just when all the butter's melted, you can't see it anymore. 
we're going to go in with our heavy cream. You can brown this butter if you want. Cook it a little extra longer if you like. A little extra longer. Is that a sentence? You could cook it a little extra longer if you want and brown the butter, but that's not really the flavor I want. So in here we got this nice rendered fat from the pancetta. We got our butter. And now we're going to add a half a cup of heavy cream. Give this a nice little mix. We want it to get nice and warm. Oh, look at that. Just a sultry combination of fats. Animal fats, the best kind of fats. I prefer seed oils. There's a nice little peppercorn in here. You wanna know a fun fact about peppercorn? If you're too high from eating too much weed or smoking too much weed, you can chew on a peppercorn. It'll actually combat the feelings of being anxious and overly stoned. Better than CBD will, but CBD will also do a good job. So if you have anxiety when you smoke weed or you eat weed, but you need it for medicine, find the strain with high CBD and chew on some peppercorns and you'll feel a-okay. That's why I always have peppercorn in my pocket. I got dairy pockets, I got peppercorn pocket. This is nice and warm. We're gonna add all of this into here. We did too good of a job maybe. All right, now we're just going to add all this delicious fat and weed. Scrape the pan here. We got some rendered fat, little pancetta bits. So we have 160 milligrams in here. And we're just gonna give this oh, a nice wet mix here. Oh yeah. The faster you whisk this, the more air you'll add into it and the fluffier they will be. Now let's season this fucker. We got a little black pep, a little bit of salt. And since we're making a mustard volute, how manly of me. That's the most manly thing I've done in this kitchen. You wanna cry about it? So we got some pecan honey mustard, which will be nice. We'll put some crushed red peppers on the potato skin, so I'm not gonna add any more heat here, but I do want some mustard flavor. We've got the beef stock in here. Oh yeah. Mustard is a wonderful flavor. I don't like putting it on things like on top, but it's got a nice amount of like vinegary taste to it. This is the perfect consistency. If you want a little wetter, you could add a little bit more heavy cream right in there. If you want some more wheat in it, you could add a little bit more infused butter. Now we're going to add our pancetta in there. But one last mix and you got yourself a nice pancetta mash or taters. Mash or taters. Infused, of course. Hey. Taters are done. Now it's time for the chicken. What? The, sh the chicken. What? How do you say it in French? Not like that. Taters are done. You can stop now, eat a whole plate full of it, take a nap, come back to this chicken, however you'd like. But we got two tablespoons of olive oil in here. We got a nice medium heat. Should sizzle a little bit when we go in. We took our chicken out of the brine. Don't rinse it. All you want to do is pat them dry. There we go. There you go. And when they go in the pan, we want to do a little salt and pepper here. We got some spicy stuff coming our way, so we don't want to make it too much. It's going to take about six minutes aside. You cook them for six minutes, flip it. You want it to be nice and golden brown. That brine that we made is going to keep these extra juicy and flavorful. So we want to cook these all the way through. They're going to cook a little bit in our sauce, but not too much. So we want to make sure we don't get any salamander poisoning. Chicken's been cooking on this side for about five or six minutes. We're gonna give it a nice little flip. Beautiful. Now we're gonna put a little more salt and pepper on this side here. Now we're in here for another six to eight minutes. We wanna see some golden brown crispy chicken, and then they're gonna come out and rest. Ooh, you smell that? It smells good. All right, we got these cooking. Look how beautiful, nice little sear we got going. When we turn this down to a medium heat, see all this flavor in the pan here from the olive oil and the chicken. We wanna keep that there. All, see all this here from the chicken? That's called a fond. So we wanna keep all this flavor. We're gonna make our roux right now. A roux is just equal parts butter and flour. So we got two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna add two tablespoons of flour. Now roux is the second mother sauce in French cooking. It's a white sauce. We could do a bechamel, which is with dairy, but we're gonna do a veloute, which means velvety in French, and that's gonna be with broth. But they're both gonna start with a roux. That is the base for all white mother sauce in French cooking. They are quite delicious. We want the butter to melt completely, and we're gonna add two tablespoons of now we use four tablespoons of butter, you want four tablespoons of flour. 
If you want to put more weed, you use some weed butter right now, make a nice little delicious infused roux. A tablespoon is going to go in, two tablespoons, and we're going to mix this till we have a, like a nice wet sand. You could use a whisk, you could use whatever. This is not that difficult to, to deal with. We're going to do a whisk for, we want some of that fond in our bechamel here. So we want to kind of scrape as much as we can off. We're going to get all that flavor in. We have a nice wet sand here. You want to let this only cook for about a minute or two here. It should brown a little bit. Now we have one cup of our beef broth. You can use chicken broth, but we use beef in our mashed potatoes and we want to use nice even flavors and we want to kind of jazz it up a little bit. Keep our, keep our minds and our tongues guessing. So we got a cup of beef broth here. We want to gradually whisk it in. We want to make sure there are no lumps. We want only to do this for about two minutes. See these nice little bubbles, perfect. Keep it on the medium heat. One cup of heavy cream, and we have our Dijon mustard and our ground mustard. Beautiful. This to be one nice solid color. Beautiful. Now we are going to get our mustards in here. And we got some, I love ground mustard. I put it on so many things, but we put some honey pecan in our mashed potatoes. So again, we just want nice congruent flavors all the way throughout the dish. Only want to cook this for about four minutes total till it's nice and warm and combined. This is going to start to thicken a little bit and that's what we want. Beautiful. You want to be able to. Cooking is really easy. So easy. Any schmuck can do it. I didn't go to cooking school. I don't have any formal training. I just have a lot of depression, PTSD, and unresolved. So it's nice and smooth. Gorgeous. Now, I want to keep this height, the height, the heat on, the medium, medium heat. And we want to put beautiful chicken back inside. Now, this sauce goes great on any sort of protein, pork, chicken, fish especially. So we want to let these cook for another two or three minutes in the sauce and then we can eat. Look at that. So our hard work is over. Now we get to enjoy the fruits or the potatoes of our labor. Now potatoes are fruit. I want to bring them back to life a little bit. You could heat them in the microwave over medium high heat. What I prefer to do is take a little butter, a little heavy cream, warm it up and add it. Oh yeah, nice and smoking. Give it a little mix. That'll loosen this up and make them extra creamy like we like it. Just mix it until it's all absorbed. And now you have, oh yeah, it's like we just made them. Beautiful. So all of our weed is right here, which is why I'm gonna put a lot of it. I would say there's probably, probably about 40 milligrams on this plate, so it's not that bad. Let's add a nice, a nice chubby piece of chicken. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Now we're gonna take these beautiful crispy potatoes that you would have thrown out if it weren't for my good graces and help. Thank God for you, salty potato man. This has the right amount of salt. We don't have to add any more salt to it. It's gonna add a nice crunch, a little bit of a different texture. Beautiful. And now we're gonna go in with our, a little more of our mustard lote right on top. Oh yeah, we're gonna put a little bit more. Now if you use weed butter in this, just be aware. Now you could add crispy onions on top. You could do whatever you want from here, but you don't have to. Oh, so good. Can we eat this yet? It's time to finally eat. Evan says that I could eat. I'm gonna eat first. Get over here, you big blue whale. How come when Sublime calls a woman a big blue whale, it's romantic, but when I do it, it's misogynistic. I felt like it was nice. This is a double wow. standard. What is happening on this plate right now? We got a little mashed potatoes. That's where all the wheat is. So oh, we got a little it. infused mashed potatoes. What are these crunchies on top? What, little, are, what are they? They're potato. They're the skin of the potato that everyone throws out. And we've... Wow. Made them something delicious. We got a little uh, volute sauce with mustard. Volute. And some perfectly cooked chicken, so. I'm impressed with your French. I didn't know you spoke any French at all. I'm coming in here. I'm coming in. Wow. 
What's that? How much? How much? Uh, how infused is this this potato situation? What am I walking into right now? About forty milligrams on this plate. Oh my god! Look at that. Not that bad. Nice light. Oh, oh, it's dripping off of me. Oh, oh, there's like a complexity here. Yeah. What is that depth? You need. What's it? What's the, sweet in here? The chicken is so perfectly cooked, mm. it almost blends in texturally with the mashed potatoes. Oh my god. It's juicy. Dare I say succulent? Succulent. But you need these little crispy potato skins on top. It changes the mm. flavor. There's like a tang in here. And the texture. That's the wow. mustard. There's a tang. There's a sweetness that I'm really liking a lot. We're in Tang Town, baby. Oh. Ugh. That voltage sauce. Mm. Well. I will say these mashed potatoes are fucking amazing. Oh, the pancetta. I forgot about that. I would say, if at the very least, what you learn from this recipe is to brine your chicken, then you're already way ahead. You can make this without the mashed potatoes. That took us about 25 minutes. Let's say you just want to make the chicken. You could literally make this dish in 12 minutes. It's really easy. That's one of the French mother sauces, so you're learning. Evan's not a doctor, but I am also not a doctor. No doctors here. There's no doctors here. We won't get into the propaganda around weed and everything else about it, but this is one of the healthiest, most useful broad spectrum plants on our entire planet. And the fact that you think it's some sort of a gateway drug is the problem and we will disabuse you of that notion one delicious recipe at a time. We'll see you next week.